Well, all we do is the water chemistry part. We don't do anything else. So if you sign up for the Sutro Pool Concierge, we send you the lead. Because water is different in local market, right? It's different in Houston than it is in San Francisco. You know, well waters and all the things we deal with locally. So we'll send those leads to you. We want to partner with the service techs and the pool guys, not cannibalize their business. And in fact, we're trying to make them more profitable and, and try to make them more efficient. So it's a partnership. This is episode 169 with Jim Conti of Sutro. Enjoy. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Diafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here in the studio. No, thank you guys for the, uh, for the invitation. Yeah. So can you introduce yourself and your role at Sutro to the listeners? Yeah, my name is uh, Jim Conti. I'm responsible for sales for Sutro International and uh, bringing the product from, you know, product realization to uh, commercial markets uh, in the pool industry right now. Very good. Thank you. And we want to go back to the beginning. How did Sutro get started and how has it, you know, evolved over the years? Uh, well, that's a good, that's a good story. Cause actually there's, there is an actual backstory behind Sutro and that Ravi Karani, who was the CEO and founder actually worked in a pool store his whole life in uh, LA. His father is pretty well known, uh, with a chain of stores called Magnolia. And, uh, he got started doing water testing and doing all the things that a pool store and a retailer might do in the pool world. And he came out with a product, uh, first, which was an ORP based product and started to, to bring it out, but found that that technology was just really not being readily receptive. So he stopped, he closed the company and actually retooled and came out with, uh, with Sucho and it took him five years of R and D and he has an engineering degree in microfluidics. So engineering was over, over five years to bring Sutro to market from where, again, the company started with ORP. Wow. That's a pretty crazy story. Yeah. So what makes Sutro different from the other options that are out there? We know that, you know, technology has evolved quite a bit and you have different things like Finn and other deals like that. But, you know, what makes Sutro different? And as I said, this company was really started from the ground up. Uh, Ravi saw that ORP was not a technology that was going to be well received over time. And as I said, stopped an ORP company and restored it. So the technology really was designed to be what would be most received and most respected within the industry. And again, this industry, as you know, is full of opinion of what, what is the best. And there's people who are going to say, I like this or I like that. But we really went and looked at and said, when you talk to most people, test strips are good, right? Reagent-based testing is better. Reagent based with photometry is best. Takes out the human element, right? You don't have to guess what colors you're looking at and to go from there. So he based that on the fact that reagent based testing with photometry was the best way to do it. And the example of that out in the space today is spin touch, right? The Lamotte spin touch is an example of that. Uh, Finn uh, and Blue Riot are still ORP sensors and they use a, an ORP and a pH sensor. But they don't run anything else. Those are the two basic parameters for which they test for. But Sutro tests for free chlorine in PPM, not millivolts, alkalinity, pH, and temperature, all with reagent-based testing. Why do, you, why do you think ORP wasn't the way to go? Um, well, first of all, it's millivolts, right? And most even state regulations require at least one test per day on a commercial pool with PPM. So even if you run an ORP meter, uh, which a lot of commercial pools do, right? They run an ORP meter to regulate chlorine flow. You still need to, at the end of the day, or every so many hours, depending on the state regulation, run a Lamotte spin touch or a a reagent-based PPM test. In addition, when you enter into residential pools, you enter in the word CYA. And when you have CYA in a residential pool, that impacts the ability of the ORP sensor, right? The oxidation reduction potential, which is the acronym, once you enter in CYA, you start to impact the sensor's ability to read what the sanitization level really is of that pool. So it enters into a loop where it starts to say, hey, I need more chlorine. You put in more trichlor, you put in more trichlor, you put in more CYA, and the loop continues. In addition, when you take a millivolt reading from, let's say, an ORP sensor and you bring it into a water testing facility that's using a spin touch, you're trying to compare millivolts to PPM. And they never will match. So the consumer's confused. The industry's got two different baselines of, it's like Microsoft and Apple, right? You've got two different standards. They don't communicate. Same with ORP and, uh, and PPM. They're just, the two standards that just never, will never mesh. 
But yeah. I mean, we, we ran a pool service company and yeah. had these, you know, automation systems up there with, you know, chemical feeding systems that are ORP. Like I, I still can't explain to you what ORP does or how it works fully. Yeah. I mean, we were engulfed in it. Like if you ask any pool person, like, you know, maybe the smartest ones might know how it works and how to adjust it, but you're trained from the beginning to test water with either a, t a test kit or yep. strips or something where you're always looking at parts per million. And then you get to this high, high end automation and it's using this ORP. It, it's a big gap to jump, right? For most exactly. people. Yeah. And it, but it was a, it was a solution that was readily available. You could right. take an off the shelf ORP and pH sensor, put a Wi-Fi chip in it and have a remote sensing device if you would. Mm -hmm. But if you went back to like the show we were at in Monterey last week, every tech I talked to, and you say, what testing do you use? 95% went right back to Taylor. I'm still putting five drops of phenol red in my vial, right? I'm still dipping my, my vial into the pool and, and taking my analog or, or manual testing. They were not using, ORP was not one of the solutions that they were still right. using today. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the only introduction we have to it is those high-end chemical feeders. Right. And it's, you're still testing a test kit, even if you have those on your pools every time you go there. So it's, yep. it's kind of really a frustrating thing in my opinion. To, yeah, and those devices are limited too, because there's no, there's no sensor for alkalinity. You can't run right. a sensor for alkalinity. You got to run a, tri a titration. Well, at least that's the only acceptable form still today. So those devices will still only check for two. And if you're an LSI guy and you start to, I mean, the water chemistry thing, as you know, is a huge, hugely opinionated uh, <laughs> area right now, but uh, you could never run alkalinity out of your monitor. So you would still need to go out and do that. And lastly, ORP still requires calibration. The orb gets dirty from being in a pool. You still have to go out and dip a strip. Most of the devices still require you to dip a strip to calibrate the ORP device. So therefore, the question really remains is, what's the point? If I have to calibrate it against the strip, why don't I just use the strip? Mm -hmm. And if I don't get alkalinity and I still got to run that test, what am I really getting? I can't run LSI. I can't run any other testing parameters without other things. Sure. At least at this point, especially if you're shooting gunite or you know, those yeah. types of other high-end things. Yeah. I mean, it's more common in commercial pools. And I think people who operate those more regularly understand that a little bit better. But yeah. most of the industry is dealing with residential. You know, it's commercial space is pretty small. At least I think of who actually operates those pools at a high level, you know, so. And they're inside. So CYA is usually kept at the 30 right. parts per million, just so you keep that <clears throat> buffer between the chlorine, but, and they're typically running liquid, right? Cause they don't have the UV issue. Yeah. yeah. So can you explain what a reagent kind of is and why that's different? And if people don't know. Well, um, reagents were designed by the two companies that we at least utilize. Our Sutro unit right now is a uh, Lamotte reagent. So there's a standardization that the reagents that were built for science, and I'm not a scientist, by the way, I'm purely the front end. So any technical questions I would, at this point in the conversation, would have reverted to Ravi for <laughs> a deep dive. But uh, um, reagents that are being used right now, both by Taylor and Lamott, are the ones that are used or, or, or used currently right now in Sutro. But as far as the technical aspects of reagents, I mean, they are designed to identify, you know, certain parameters of the chemical that we're trying to, to look for. And if you can run... Any reagent-based test, at some point, Sutro would be able to do a reagent test suitably. So you can see the expansion capabilities that Sutro could bring. So next year, or the year after, imagine us testing for CYA, if you believe in that reagent test, calcium, borates, phosphates. A lot of these things don't need to be tested as frequently, but imagine if there was a reagent-based test for most things, the Sutro unit would be expandable into taking those other readings that are reagent-based versus the limitations of, again, going back to other technologies that are available today. Mm -hmm. And by the way, doing that all remotely with no human intervention, no human mistake, no colorblind or, or color impaired type tech who's trying to understand what color red am I looking at or what kind of yellow am I looking at or my in Phoenix direct sun affects what color red that is now. So my dosing really depends on how I interpret you know, what that reagent returns for a reading. So if you're just slightly off on the meniscus of a Taylor test kit, that impacts your reading. If you don't take your readings at the proper depths and, and do the things that you should do, because most don't take their readings at the required 14 to 18 inches, you get different readings and reagents are built to design to, to identify those. Uh, well, that's also how the sutra is different, right? It's 18 inches deep where the other ones aren't. Yeah. And if you ask any tech, and I will bring this out, you say, hey, do you take all your tests at elbow length? And they'll all pretty much look down at the ground and say, yes. 
I tried to. Right? I, I meant to. I wanted to. But then if you look at the way I was, if you look at the way, if you took a Taylor vial and you put it into the water, what immediately happens? Water fills the vial. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you pierce the surface of the water, that vial starts to fill. So even if you then took it to 14 inches, you already had water in the vial. Yeah. So you're really not getting that yeah. same test, even if you were good and took your tailor down to 14 inches. Yeah, there's tricks to turn it, you know, upside down and flip yeah. it, and, you know, but, no, but it's I'm still, yes, you, yeah, it's, how many it's, people it's still difficult to scoop it off that top two right. inches and call oh, it a day. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a lot of technicians. Yeah. <laughs> I saw on uh, David Van Brunt's YouTube channel, he was reviewing the Sutro unit and he was comparing it to the spin touch mm. when he was looking at the free chlorine, alkaline, the pH and alkalinity, they were pretty much almost the same. And I said, damn, that's pretty cool. Considering one, you don't do anything. Right. <laughs> and the other one, you know, you're doing a little bit more, yeah. but it's just, uh, it's really impressive. And even to you look at the complexity. I mean, I know we're going to you know, talk about how Sutra works, but you're, you're talking about putting water in a spin touch and have a pre-calibrated disc that you put in. Well, even putting it into that little bowl is, if you don't get it right, it's, you know, and people do it at the water testing platforms. And um, if you look at us, we run 1 50th of a drop of water. So we're not even, look at all, the microfluidics of it all is so impressive that Ravi and his team have developed. It's, it, it, it's very mind-boggling how they're accurate at the level. It's like the medical test when you go in and get your finger pricked and you take a, um, a drop of blood and they were going to run so many tests from that little drop of blood. That's what we do. Uh, that's what Ravi's team has created within Sutra. And I feel like we've always been kind of at the forefront of technology with our businesses. And, you know, every time these meters came up, I just always kind of saw problems with it. And Sutra is kind of the first one I looked at with the reagent system and the way the battery works, which we'll talk about, but just the way that it works, it's really the first one that I've had mm. confidence in believing that it, it, it could actually change. I mean, you still got a big hump to overcome with technology and the in industry, but I think we're getting there. But it's the first one really that I've, I've looked at and thought, yeah, this this really has a chance. You know, the other ones yeah. I've, I've always liked the idea, but every time I've tested it or tried it, I'm just like, ah, I just don't see how, mm. how it's going to transition. It's one of the few things in the industry I don't mind looking at. Yeah, most that, thing, that, that most things in the pool industry, <laughs> it just looks so ugly and it just looks like it came straight from the eighties where this thing is like very hip. Like it looks like something that might hold your towel or it could be a little stereo system that you would take to the beach. Like it has a very like cool look to it. Yeah. And I think that, um, yeah, just incorporating its function and look. Well, yeah, I mean, homeowners won't actually care that that's in the water. You know, they if might you put... take that top <laughs> yeah. off and try to take a drink of <laughs> yeah, it. Or something. That. <laughs> well, what's funny Maybe. is that this is um, geared after the flux capacitor and Back to the Future. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. just as you were talking about it, and just, <laughs> yes. there it is, right there. And the bottom, we're working it to be a breathalyzer, so you can take it for hot tub uh, parties and stuff. Oh, so wow, lots yeah. of functionality available within the, within the unit. <laughs> yeah, super cool. <laughs> I was going to say, so does that make you Doc Brown? But I guess that would be Robbie. <laughs> yeah, no. Robbie, Doc I think Brown. Robbie might be Doc. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he gets to drive the DeLorean. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, Jim gives us a step by step walkthrough of how Sutro works, compares the Sutro to the iPhone 3 and how it will advance with time, and we discuss why it's not a threat to your business. This episode of the Pool Chasers podcast is brought to you by Pentair. Pentair is dedicated to elevating the pool experience for their dealers and customers. As a leader in the pool and spa industry, Pentair brings connected, efficient, and quality products to pool owners, helping them save time, money, and effort so they can effortlessly enjoy all of life's moments that take place in the pool. Pentair's pool solutions are engineered to filter, clean, and sanitize water, while Pentair automation products like Pentair Home App make it all easy to control from anywhere. Pentair has innovated to create tools that empower pool owners to easily control their pool maintenance. Two recent solutions include the Prowler 930W Robotic In-Ground Pool Cleaner and the ChemCheck Water Quality Monitoring System. In addition to streamlining pool maintenance routines, pool automation can help pools run more efficiently. By leveraging Pentair solutions, you can help your customers set pre-programmed schedules to automate a variety of pool maintenance operations, from pump speed and flow to water quality. So check out Pentair.com forward slash pool to explore the many ways you can help your customers spend more time enjoying their pool and less time worrying about the maintenance. For more information, click the link below in the show notes. 
This episode of the Pool Chasers podcast is also brought to you by Primate Pool Tools. All right, by now you've heard us talk about our friends at Primate Pool Tools, right? All their poles are made with aerospace-grade carbon fiber, which offers 10 times the strength of aluminum at half the weight. This allows you to cut through the water with ease. They have options for any level of commercial and residential maintenance with multiple models of poles to choose from, as well as an extension system that can extend the reach of any pole up to 40 feet. Primate Pool Tools continues to lead the way in carbon fiber technology by now offering stainless steel version of their flagship 2X and 3X models that are ideal for heavy vacs, as well as custom limited edition designs and brand new custom grips. All the Primate Poles are handmade in the USA, come with a one-year commercial warranty, and most importantly, top-notch customer service. Right now, you can get $20 off your order by using Pool Chasers 2021. That's Pool Chasers 2021 at checkout. And make sure to listen to episode 104 or click the link below for more information. So, you know, you talked about the technology. Um, let's get a let's take a deeper dive into that. How does this all work exactly? Yeah, and I'll tell you, it's uh, very, very simple from the outside, but extremely complicated with what's going on inside the, um, the Sutra unit. The, the unit is actually a floating robot. This is not a static piece of equipment. There's actually tests being done within the side of this, of this unit. Unlike the sensors, which are pretty static, there's no moving parts within most of those products. This product actually runs true lab tests within itself and then flushes itself and then recalibrates to do another one. And how it works is it basically takes water into the bottom grate. And again, it takes it in every time at 14 inches. So you get that consistency of the water test and it floats throughout the pool. So it's getting different readings three times a day from each part of the pool, which if you know, if you left it in front of the output where the chlorinator is, right, you're going to get a different chlorine reading. If you leave it near your water fountain, your pH is going to fluctuate as your fountains or your aerators pop off and on. So having it float gives you that ability to average out over time what that cycle of that pool looks like. So eight hours and, you know, eight in the morning when you got full sun and then eight hours maybe at night when it's a little quieter and, and maybe you had a pool party that day. So you get a different reading, of course, as well. But as it draws it in, there's actually little um, uh, robot arms that sit down in here and within this cartridge that you can see that I can pull out, there's actually little holes in the bottom. And the little robotic arms actually spin up screws, actually turn up into this thing and turn inside where you would see the reagents based. And the screws actually turn up to here and then actually push this reagent up into here, which is where the flow cell is. Well, as you can see, this is mostly our IP right here is this flow cell. This is where the actual mixing takes place. You can see how small that is. That's one fiftieth of a drop of reagent versus five drops of phenol red if you were to run the Taylor kit. Gets pushed up into this cell, mixes in here, and there's a little metal ball in it that actually turns, mixes it together, and then computer light is passed through the chip. So once it does its mix, light is passed through and a reading is taken. That reading is then sent to an app, and the app then displays what that reading was and at what time it took it, and then it translates that reading into a dosing instruction. So if it reads chlorine at a certain level and it knows you're in a 20,000 gallon pool and you need to be at seven point, whatever your metric might be, it then says, okay, calculate this, turn this right into the uh, two cups of whatever it is that you're using. Now, if you scan that chemical, say it's GLB or Leisure Time or BioGuard, it will turn it into a specific dosing instruction. So it'll say, put in two cups of, oh, you're using BioGuard. Oh yeah, put two cups of that in versus just being a generic. Um, liquid bleach or some other recommendation that might be more generic. So basically takes the entire guesswork out with no human intervention to create that test. And then it goes back and it actually then, once it runs it, it flushes it and expels the reagents and the water out the side. Oh, wow. So then it clears itself, right? Pushes water through, clears the cell and prepares for the next test eight hours, eight hours later. Each cartridge has in it enough tests for 100 tests. So we run three tests a day for 30 days. At the 30th day, the system will say, hey, you enter into service mode. I'm almost out of reagent. When it enters into service mode, those screws actually retract. They come out from within the, the cartridge, retract back down. You pull the cartridge out of Sutro and a new one is sent to you, by the way, automatically. And the reason we do that is we keep the reagent fresh we don't want them sitting on a retailer shelf or in his storeroom or in, you know, 108 degrees here in Phoenix on their truck for, you know, a month before they replace it. 
We just want to make sure that it's because without the reagent being fresh, right? The tests then therefore are all suspect, right? So we make sure we do all the things we can to ensure proper testing. Then all you do is basically pop it in like a cassette tape. You flip it over, and on the other side is a 30-day uh, rechargeable lithium-ion battery. At the same time, you replace your cartridge every month. You take the battery out, pull the other one out of the charger, replace it, and drop the, the lid back on. So everybody listening, you're not able to see what's going on right, right now, but we are getting a demonstration, and we'll definitely get a video of this yeah. so we can yeah, share with everybody. Sure. And then you heard the click, and you're back, <laughs> yeah. you're back in the cool. I gave you the click. That was the, the audio portion of the presentation. Easy peasy. <laughs> That's incredible. And you can see what goes into actually taking a test now remotely versus going even with a spin touch. You've got to manually take the syringe, push water in. And imagine if you're working at a dealer and somebody walks in with a water test, right? You guys know. You don't know how long that water test has been in their car, what time they took it, what depth they took it at, what time of day they took it at. If it's even a water test, we don't know what's in that pickle sure. jar they just brought into your store. And you're now being asked to run a test on that water and provide advice. And that's a pretty scary thing when you consider about a pool and somebody putting their trust in the fact that you're running a water test and you don't really understand what you're running. And you're at this. Now imagine if you were that same guy and they brought in their water test and they had a sutro in their pool. Well, we have software that actually will combine the spin touch and the sutro readings into one interface. So imagine being able to see the spin touch reading and then the readings over time that Sutro has been taken over the last X amount of days before they came in and be able to compare what you see to what Sutro saw over the last week and now be able to make more data, right? More knowledge, better recommendations of what they should do. Yeah, it's awesome. I know Leslie's has like invested heavily into spin touches now mm -hmm. and, you know, for the reason I bring that up is just you have homeowners bringing in water tests. You know, that's always been an issue with pool technicians. Like if they don't trust what they're doing, they're going to bring a water test in. But like you said, there's so many variables in that. Yeah. But if you had a suture in the water as a technician and they brought it into a Leslie's, which is now using spin touches mm -hmm. and it's quite off, you can compare those or it's going to be close. You know, it's a much better comparison in real life example of what's going on in the pool as opposed to them bringing some old water and yep. comparing it to you doing your reagents by hand. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, it takes a lot of that error out of it. Exactly. And what does the pool owner want? Do they want more work or less work? Right. The idea is I don't want to do anything. I want my pool to be healthy and balanced for my kids to swim in. That's why we got pools. So the more work I have to do, the more averse I become to want to do work. And a lot of folks will go into their backyard, look at their pool and go, it looks good to me. And they will skip their, their shock for the week. Right. I don't see what's going on, you know, beneath the water. And even by having people do a spin touch at their home, you're still asking that homeowner, pool owner to do something. Whereas Sutro says, you don't have to do anything. In fact, I'll give you three tests a day with no involvement. And that's really the key in that giving that data back to the, the store to see those tests. Now you get data and data is power, right? Knowledge is power. Yeah. I love the fact that you can tell it what chemicals you're using because I think that's a big deal for, you know, there's so many different pool companies out there and so many ways we all take care of water, right? Exactly. But able, being able to tell it exactly what chemicals you're using kind of takes the air out of yeah. the technicians as well. It, it basically tells them, you know, you need to gallons of liquid chlorine like today, right? Or, yeah. you know, exactly whatever you're using, which is pretty cool to yeah. be able to tell them exactly what to put in. And the technician can leave the warehouse or the garage with exactly what they need for the pools they're going to go see. And they know exactly what they're walking into before they ever get into that gate and go in the back and go, oh God, I'm, it's green. I'm going to need X and Y and I don't have it. I got to go back to the shop and get it. I know exactly what I'm walking into when you go into that pool. That's one of the key elements. And then on the server side, be able to proactively call that customer and say, I had a pool party on a Sunday and I'm looking at your pool, Mrs. Customer, and there's no chlorine in it. You might want to A, put some chlorine in or B, I'm going to come out today, right, invisible to the customer because I saw and put that chlorine for them before it costs me money when I go back out there on Wednesday and see that pool on a regular trip. Yeah. Right. I have a very important question. Uh -oh. What is a cassette tape? 
<laughs> I'll have my, uh, my, my I'll, I'll, I'll put up there with your 8-track player too <laughs> you said it pops in like a cassette tape I don't know yeah. who's actually popped in a cassette tape in the last well I said flux capacitor too <laughs> yeah, so that dates it completely back to uh... I definitely know what a flux capacitor is <laughs> I think they might know what that is more than yeah, a cassette tape I, true that that is true I'll date myself on that one uh, that's awesome I think that's cool you know, you plan on innovating the product because at the end of the day, unless there's a camera or something on it, the chems could look good and you could still have a green pool. Yep. So you still might not be able to tell, but if you can see, you know, phosphate levels and different things like that really spiking sure. um, and you have the metrics showing you that everything was good, except something happened on Saturday where everything just plummeted yeah. or went up being a professional, you kind of know what's going on. Like, okay, there's probably a party, tons yeah. of people, tons of stuff going on in the water. So I can be proactive and load this stuff Absolutely. up. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That, that is major, you know, thinking about when we ran our pool service business and getting things ready and getting prepared for those days, it would have been really helpful having an idea of what your 10 pools going to look right. like and what your 10 pools are going to look like. Do you need some specialty chems or, yeah. um, will this, you know, say if you're using tabs, will this half bucket get you through the day or, um, sure. whatever it might be. So yeah, yeah that's important. It also it kind of tells you that if you get there and the water is cloudy and different things like that, and you know that the chems are on point that maybe you have to uh, adjust the, uh, run times uh, exactly. on the pump and different things like that. So yeah, Tons of, um, you can probably get as creative as you want with it. Yeah. And I, I think if you look at where we are today, uh, as we mentioned, like we're the iPhone 3, where the iPhone 3 was when it launched. Now look where the iPhone 12, 13 is sits. All the features that they've added over time. That's the evolution that Sutra will follow, is that today we can do this core basic stuff. And most folks in the pool space will agree, if my alkalinity pH and free chlorine are in line, 95% of my pools will be okay at least between visits. Now, some people would say, oh, I don't have to check. I want to check for borates. Well, borates have to check quarterly, maybe, or some people want to do it monthly. Even if it's monthly, the idea is Sutro doesn't replace the technician. It just augments and creates efficiencies for, this, for the service guys to be more efficient, change their routes to save money, to be more efficient, especially in today day and age of chlorine. You can't get it. So you want to make sure you're using only what you need to make sure you you know, don't overpay or overspend because that's your profit you're throwing away if you're not if you're not careful. As we grow the technology, then you'll start to see very specific features designed for the for the tech. You know, putting it in the pool pad so it's not floating, or building it in so now I can control uh, potentially liquid chlorinators and and things like that. So to your point, I could sit in my office and change the runtime of that chlorinator, and I don't have to drive out there and. Burn, burn a half a day to drive out to that pool just to turn the adjustment. So imagine being, like you can do with hot tubs now, right? You can go on your app and turn the heater up in your hot tub, turn it down. Uh, and a lot of folks like the Haywards with Omnis and others are moving more toward that, that automated you know, control that you can do remotely. It's crazy to think that anybody would think that this thing is going to put them out of work. I know. You know, we need all the help we can get. Yeah. Like I wouldn't... <laughs> Wouldn't think that for well, a second. Well, I think the reason that they think that is because other ones in the past have offered like yes. shipping chemicals to the customer's house for them and stuff like that. So it's like, mm -hmm. if you need chemicals, we'll ship them to you. There's yeah. no reason for a pool guy. That was kind of like their angle with them when they yeah. first came out. Shit, and that sounds good to me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, with everything we talked about with the ORP systems, like it's just a really faulty yeah. kind of thing, but that's, the only reason I think I that's why people that thought about it, but is because those basic chemicals are such a small amount of money in your business. Like if you look at the numbers mm. and the time you invest in, like, you know, grabbing the buckets from uh, distribution, putting them in the, storing exactly. them, all this shit and, you know, distributing them correctly. Like all these things that go into it when you could have been more focused on specialty chems or repairs, repairs. or these other things, yeah. you can make way more money. Like, dude, pff, yeah. take them. Right. <laughs> and that's it. And that's really the idea is that utilizing technology, using, utilizing Sutro in your route, you can grow your chem route. And I can do it with junior technicians that Sutra will tell you exactly what to put in. Or imagine having an admin sitting back. I had a, one of the guys at the show said, I'm going to hire somebody 
put them in my office and let them look at my pools and tell this guy what to put in and just sit there and tell them what to do and put them in and just send them go around and they can grow their camera app. Now, if a customer doesn't do business with you for chemicals, you could sell them a Sutro and help them manage their water chemistry while you create that fishing line that says, now I'll help you see your chemicals. Now, when your pool needs, your filter needs to be cleaned, who are they going to call? The guy who's connected to me through, through Sutro. Now, I'd hire a camera out in a second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, just being real, this is just Greg's opinion. This is not <laughs> anything other than that. Um, but just taking that weight off, everybody's business is a little bit different. But if that's not your strength and somebody yeah, can exactly. maybe take that off and your team might be happier not right. having to deal with that maybe yeah. quite as much, man, that's that's pretty yeah. major. And, and I we think, don't, again, oh, sorry, sorry, with the even with the labor shortages, like we had talked about this mm-hmm. before, Jim and I, but like it allows you to. I mean, if you don't have technicians all the time, like if, and if you're switching over or transitioning, like if you can see what the pools are doing without going to them, yeah. like you don't really necessarily have to go there that week. Like there's a way to yeah. create a business around this where, you know, we, we're only going to come when we need to, and it's going to be a different price than a full service or whatever it save may be. Time. Yeah. You'll save time, but you also don't have to have as much labor to do those pools because somebody can right. monitor them. Exactly. You know, if the technology does what it says it does, which I believe it does. So, you know, it, it's, a way that you can change the business into helping you as well in those labor shortage areas. So yeah. there's a lot that's really cool about this. Using yeah. uh, not just Sutro, but like use technology to your advantage. Yeah. At least give it a shot. You know what I mean? That's the best thing you can do. Technology has failed all of us at some point. Right. You know, it's not perfect, but man, it sure has helped, you know, yeah. a lot as well. So um, it's definitely worth a shot and saving you a ton of time. Yeah, we, we offer a pool concierge service. So just to go back to the point of we're not trying to take business from you. In fact, people call us and say, I bought a Sutro. Um, I need somebody to come out and look at my pool or fix my filter. Well, all we do is the water chemistry part. We don't do anything else. So if you sign up for the Sutro pool concierge, we send you the lead. Because water is different in local market, right? It's different in Houston than it is in San Francisco. You know, well waters and all the things we deal with locally. So we'll send those leads to you. We want to partner with the service techs and the pool guys, not cannibalize their business. And in fact, we're trying to make them more profitable and, and try to make them more efficient. So it's a partnership. It's not a, this gadget does not solve all, you know, and that's what folks need to understand. It's a piece of what the, the service guys should be doing to take care of somebody's pool. Right. Mm. Well, I like a specialty business. I wouldn't want it to do everything because it probably couldn't yeah. do everything. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, Elon Musk's new robots. They said yeah, it's sure. got arm that swings out, <laughs> skims a pool, then it brushes it. And yep. That's the one you that's might want to be scared of. Yeah, that's coming. <laughs> that's coming. We're going to take another quick break. But when we get back, Jim explains what's involved to set up a suture at your customer's house, why it's important to embrace technology in the IoT space, and the best way to introduce Sutro to your pools. This episode of the Pool Chasers podcast is brought to you by SR Smith. So, have you guys checked out SR Smith's Trade Central website yet? It is seriously the best one stop shop for all sorts of great tools and resources designed to help support and grow your pool business. You can get there by going to srsmith.com and clicking the Trade Central at the top of the page. Once you arrive at SR Smith's Trade Central website, you will gain instant access to exclusive programs and benefits that are only available to the trade. They have rewards programs, display programs, and even try me programs. They even have a place where you can add your business to their dealer locator and be found by the 100,000 plus customers a year that are coming to SR Smith's website looking for someone to install or service SR Smith products. Free leads? (laughs) Sign me up. And if free leads aren't enough, you can also enter to win $250 on Trade Central right now. Just go to www.srsmith.com and click on Trade Central. You will see the Enter to Win button there. Enter the promo code Pool Chasers. Then once you click the Submit button, you are entered to win. We want to give a big shout out to our friends at SR Smith for supporting the pool industry with Trade Central and for supporting us at the podcast with exclusive promotions for our listeners. To hear all about what SR Smith has to offer, Listen to episode 157 of the podcast or click the link below. This episode of the Pool Chasers podcast is brought to you by Anderson Manufacturing. Have you been running into leaking pools on your routes this summer? Be prepared to find and fix simple leaks for your customers by keeping the leak first responder kit from Anderson Manufacturing on your truck. 
Filled with tools and repair products that can be used to address common leaks, it's the perfect kit to have on hand even if you don't offer complete leak detection as a service. Use a set of simple tools and die to inspect common leaking areas such as fittings, skimmers, cracks, and plumbing from the pool deck. Then, patch leaks with a selection of professional LeakMaster repair products. Even if you aren't able to find the source of your customer's water loss, the information you gather by inspecting the pool will help to pass off the job smoothly to a leak detection expert. For a limited time, the First Responder Kit is available to Pool Chasers listeners for a special price of $99. To purchase, visit leaktools.com and enter the promo code POOLCHASERS during checkout. If you are interested in learning more about leak detection, click the link below or listen to episodes 87 or 150 of the podcast. So what's involved in kind of setting one of these up at a house? What? Uh, well, we use both Wi-Fi and LTE to communicate. So Sutro communicates to the hub. So the setup basically is charge the battery, set up your account, throw it in the pool. I mean, it should be about, it's a few minutes to set up. It's not uh, very difficult. The robot does it by itself. Uh, the app is easy to set up. And once you set it up, LTE means you don't need to get the Wi-Fi password from the homeowners. Basically, it talks to AT&T or T-Mobile's you know, cellular network which by the way, we don't charge for. So the backhaul is included as part of the Sutro service. So the setup for you is I can walk into somebody's backyard with a Sutro, throw it in and it's good to go. I don't have to talk to the homeowner at all, which works really well for new construction. Maybe you're doing a new house with there's no Wi-Fi. I talk to a lot of builders that do custom homes with pools. So there's no Wi-Fi there yet. So they can use this uh, as part of their- as But you do have to have the, the hub plugged in somewhere at the house, right? And yeah, the battery, battery, charger. battery charger. Yeah. 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 yeah, the hub talks to Sutro, and then the hub uh, talks to Wi-Fi or LT, depending on how you set it up. Where should the hub be in proximity of the Sutro? Uh, well, depends on the backyard, right? Because you have a lot of hard scapes, but we use 900 megahertz, which is better than a Bluetooth communication uh, protocol. So I would say 100 yards line of sight, give or take. Uh, next year, we hope to be incorporating it into the pool pad, which should be closer to the pool. And then also incorporating Sutro into the pool pad and on an inline version. So you would see all those protocols would almost be unnecessary. They'll be within inches of each other at some point. Will there be like a covering or something? Because you still need to like charge. Yeah. Right now, the, um, the current Wi-Fi hub is not waterproof. So it has to be covered. But Sutro itself obviously floats. It's, it's fun. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of houses now being built where you have like the kitchen and you have the back you know, door, screen door, and then walk out to the pool. Usually there's outlets right there. Like yeah. that's kind of a general, that'd a lot be of a pools have, ideal uh, area. Yeah, a lot of pools have sheds where a lot of the, there's electricity there, have covered patios where you can push it, just put it underneath the table. Or worst case, most folks put it inside the wall closest to the pool. It doesn't have to be, if it's using LTE, it doesn't care where your router is. Right. And that's the problem with Wi-Fi is that a lot of pools are, hardscapes now with gunite and all that blocks Wi-Fi signal and the router could be on the other, on the other end of the house. So spotty signal. LTE, that's pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't need much. Mm, it's a small data feed. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Cool. So why do you think it's so important for service pros to embrace new technologies coming out and, you know, kind of the IoT space in general? Well, everybody has an app for everything now. You can see your house, your cameras, your Tesla, right? You can just about do everything you can remotely uh, in this world. And in this point, the, the pool industry has been one of the slower industries, as we all know, to adopt technology. You know, there was ePool a while ago that didn't do very well. It caused pretty much a really bad reputation for um, uh, remote monitoring type technologies. And it hasn't done better since. So technology hasn't been better, if you will, right? The, the industry still uses analog for most everything, running a tailored test kit. It's been the most accurate and the most reliable and consistent methodology. So people haven't changed. But what is changing is that a lot of the folks in our industry come from grandfathers, fathers, and now the, the sons are in the business saying, hey, we got to go mainstream. We got to use technology. We've got to use a better way to make our route more efficient. And they use technology much better than their you know, their fathers or their grandfathers did. And they're used to apps. They're used to getting all their data on their phones or on, a, on some sort of device. And I don't think everybody's going to adopt it, but I think the folks that will achieve the most success and profitability will embrace technology to be more efficient, more profitable, and to do more with less. 
you know, how do you cover 580 pools? I mean, how do you do that? That's, that's a huge undertaking. How do you keep track of 580 pools if that was your route? That's a pretty daunting task to be responsible for it. But imagine if technology could let you prioritize what pools you went to first and then tell you exactly what to do. So I don't need a senior guy to go do water testing for me anymore. I can get junior folks to help me with my water chemistry and save my senior guides for the more profitable businesses uh, that where the money's made, right? Taking care of the filters and the, the heaters and the generators and stuff like that. But saving you so much time. I mean, say somebody wants to know what their chemistry looks like on a weekend or something like that. And you can easily open up an app yep. that is in their pool and say, it's, you know, this is where it's at. I can bring some stuff over tomorrow, but it's totally fine and safe to swim in or whatever you want to say. There's little things like that that happen all the time where customers want answers yeah. um, right away. And if you can do that without having to, you know, break away and get in your vehicle, because all those things matter. Anything that disrupts your day yeah. um, where you got to, you know, you were in the middle of doing billing or you're in the middle of doing something mm -hmm. and you've got to get in your truck and go there and figure it out or ask somebody to leave what they're doing to go check something out. Right. Technology can help eliminate that. That's exactly. cool. And plus the unknown. So you, you don't know again to what you're walking into till you go in that gate and, you know, tie the dog up and then go to, to, to run your test. You walk in there, your day could be shot, right? You might have 10 pools planned for that day, but this pool could now all of a sudden become, you know, two hours and you were expecting 10 minutes. So, mm -hmm. That's the way technology right now is we have a guy up in Washington that said we save him about four hours of drive time to his father's, his father's pool is two hours away. So he can see that chemistry without having to drive there to see the chemistry. And he might be able to skip that day and go on a day where it's more efficient to be there. So using it to save the money and the travel time and all the things that you could use uh, and grow your business. That's at the end of the day, right? How do I grow? Most people are stopped at a certain threshold of business, right? I can only take care of so many pools a day, so many days a week. Well, what if I could grow that, that profits now grow? So, Well, and like you mentioned earlier, I mean, even it can expand your business beyond full service, right? Because you can now sell that to a homeowner and you can have relationships with homeowners that are are very profitable because you're not having to physically go there and do these exactly. things. You just charge a certain amount to be that chemistry expert for them. Right. Yeah. In a way. So there's just so many ways you can expand in, in yeah. this day and age. Now the customers are more aware of the pools they are more aware of these chemical you know, shortages and all this stuff. Like I think they'd be much more open to something like that where, you know, Hey, we're, we're in a labor shortage. Are you open to me, you know, putting one of these in your pool and then we'll come as needed, you know, a couple yeah. of times a month or do they want you know? this stuff? Yeah. They already have it in their house. We've yeah. talked about this so many times. They've got the nest, they've got yeah, exactly. all the smart technology in their house. Like yeah. this isn't, it, it, it's different because it's outside and it has to do with the pool. But I feel like they're, they're going to embrace this. Oh, no. We're, we're an, absolute, an absolute extension of smart home technology. We're integrated with Google. So you'll be able to say, hey, Google, what's my pH in my pool? And people do it. They open that. Mm -hmm. They open the Sutro app six, seven times a day. They right. want to see their water chemistry, which, you know, I have people sending us pictures when they took it in there. They're in an airplane looking at their water chemistry. <laughs> And you go, <laughs> that's awesome. That's a little interesting. <laughs> just showing so, off. Just, yeah, yeah. Hey, look at, I can see my pool from 30,000 feet, but if you can get the Wi-Fi on United to work, that would be the, the first thing. So, but, sorry, I'm just checking the uh, pH level. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can do much about it from up here. <laughs> I'm still checking. I'm going to have a drone yeah. uh, drop off some uh, chlorine. Right. Might be, and plus, <laughs> I mean, maybe. And plus, we Someday. have a couple service guys that are actually have added an, another la a level of service. So instead of charging less, because a lot of folks feel that pressure in their service, right? Guys are coming down the street. I'll knock you down five or 10 bucks to take your chemical route. I have guys going up, charging 250, 300 a month, saying, I'm going to offer you a service called Never Green. But what is that? That means I will guarantee your pool will never turn green because I can see it 24 by 7. And what do you think the customer's confidence level is at that point? You'll see me 24 by 7 versus once a week. I will guarantee your pool will never turn green. And I will be here before you ever notice that it turned green. Mm -hmm. And what's funny about that is that, as we shared at the show, we've got now some of these guys that are talking about celebrity pools or very VIP level pools that, you know, if that pool turns green, you're pretty much fired. So oh, yeah. <laughs> imagine being able to say, I can see your pool and it'll never turn green. So what's that worth? Just to your reputation and, and to your business. But augmenting, using technology to make 
a more profitable line. To your point, people get Nest. They pay more for it. They're willing to see their temperature and be able to change their thermostat back to econ or whatever they want to change it to, eco. But that's that's where they get it. And we're moving to that smart home extension where right now you've got door locks and doorbells and cameras. Now your pool is nothing more than an extension of that smart home uh, experience. Right. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy too. I was just thinking that the having all that data, if it's being tested, you know, three times a day, um, even if your pool has a leak, you might start to see like this trend and like this gap where it's like, you know, these people never use the pool mm-hmm. and it's just out of nowhere, the chems, you're, it's going through chems like crazy. Right. Um, you yeah. know, that's, it's a little bit more difficult to be, uh, maybe it is to be consistent or you're not thinking about it, but when you can actually kind of, you know, sp- maybe you put it on a spreadsheet, put it on something where it shows where things like spike up or it charts drop it. Down. Yeah. Sutro charts oh, nice. it for you. So oh. you'll actually can see the historical 30 day chart with a three per day type. Uh, t- and most pools have cycles, right? As filters kick on and off and pumps kick on and off. You can see spikes and changes. And one of the things I learned really early on in the business was we had a guy that was calling saying every day his pH would would spike. And he couldn't figure out why every day at the same time his pH would spike. And what was it? His waterfall kicked on. Hmm. And he was mm-hmm. taking the test near the waterfall. And that waterfall creates aeration, which creates the turbulence, which right. drives your pH up. Nobody could see it, but the product will see it. It will see the spike every day at 4 o'clock when his waterfall kicked on. So Crazy. again, using technology to diagnose, but or else that guy could have spent, he would have been there all day testing water, trying to figure out what was going on. When in fact, it was just user, you know, lack of knowledge, which mm-hmm. education. Right. Yeah. So if company has, let's say like 500 pools on a route, like what do you think the best way to kind of introduce these to that would be? Well, it's not all 500 at once. Right. right? It's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> right. And, but, and, and Sutro does not believe in that either, right? We're not out to sell you 500 units. We're not a gadget. We're not out there trying to say, hey, you should take 500 of these. When in fact, most of the guys that will tell you that I've spoken to will say, look, pick a defined VIP list. So take your database of 500. Who's your top 25 best customers? Or who's your top 25 problematic Customers, who are folks that are driving you crazy? You're driving out there two, three times a week because every day it's something. Well, put that in their pool first and use that technology to show you A, how it works, B, get used to it, and train your field guys how to use technology. Then you slowly start to add and grow to 10, and then it's 20. And then, of course, you know, at some point, it probably will never be all 500 because you might not have that ability to, or you don't want, maybe you don't want to invest that in those other pools. But you might have, again, different layers of service. Where that bottom layer will never have that. It'll just be your basic. And at some point, guys will start to push that lower level back to the DIY. You know, say, do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to ship the cartridges somewhere, right? So if we're putting them on a pools as a service company, how is that working? You're shipping it to you. to us. To and the service, right? Yeah. So the service yeah. guy would get, if he had five in his pool, every month he'd get five cartridges. And of course, we'd probably have a few extra that he would keep. But we, again, we don't want that shelf life to be an issue or the temperature and the variation. So every month he'd get five and then Sutro will tell him automatically, hey, my cartridge is low on your next trip. Put it in service mode and change my cartridge. And we're changing some of the things the way we do. Um, again, with feedback from the field and the evolution of Sutro, we're going to be modifying the number of tests per day. So maybe you don't want three. Maybe you only want two. But maybe you're a commercial pool that needs four. So you'll be able to adjust the meet, the readings and run it from one to four, depending on what you're customer might be, which in case then the cartridge might also last a little bit longer, but maybe you only want two readings and that's all you need for your business. Because some people have said, hey, I don't need three, I need two. And then some have said, shoot, the state of XYZ needs me to take four readings a day. Can you do that? And the answer is, yeah, we can. And then timestamp it right accordingly. So make sure it's in my time zones and stuff like that. So if you, there would be a little bit of learning curve with that, with your team, you know, you'd have to have it where they swap it out every 30 days, that and the battery. So yep. there'd be a little bit of a a transition with that, but I think it's the app walks you through everything. It's, I mean, again, it does the best it can to help you understand where Sutro is and what it needs and to prepare for it. And again, it is a working robot. So it does need to be put into a, it's amazing to watch it go through a cartridge change. It actually runs through a progression. It actually says, take it out of the water. I'm going to flush myself. Wait a minute. And you watch it vibrate and flush itself. Then you pull up the, the top up, 
change the car, and it goes back through its progression. It checks battery, it checks Wi-Fi or LT strength, it checks the cartridge. Did you do it right? Throw it back in the pool. Okay, now wait, I'm going to run a calibration. So it's really super slick, um, wow. the way it sits up. I mean, it's phenomenal. Again, the way the guys engineered it, and they continue to evolve the technology. So again, to your first question was crawl, walk, run with the technology, right? Start today. And don't wait. Start today and don't wait for the next pool season either, right? Start learning the technology during the off season. So when you hit your stride, you're fully integrated. And we're doing integrations of our software into other people's potential applications. Other people use different uh, service apps. Um, there's a couple of them out there. The only things they don't have is what? Water chemistry. Mm. They have routes and you can do planning and notes and drops and emails. They don't have the water chemistry part. So you'll see us integrated into various service apps. Uh, as well to make it easier for the service guy to keep it all in one uh, location. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Going into like the fall and winter too, you could throw them in the spa, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yep. maybe that would be, you know, good to test it out on just because there's not yep. as many of those. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And spas are great. I mean, even if you had, I mean, not in Arizona, you're going to have frozen, frozen spas, but just the temperature aspect of Sutro alone, I got them in a couple of Airbnbs up in the woods in the, in the winter. And if that heater goes out on that Airbnb and that customer shows up and that hot tub's frozen because the heater popped, that's a bad experience. And oh, it shows you the temperature too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so you'll huge. at least know the heater's off or I have to get there because I'm watching the temperature plummet. Um, mm. And or you might also then have an on-site supervisor or superintendent where you're the tech and say, hey, go over to that spa and put in a cup of, what do you got, the spa guard? Put that in. And then you know the readings are good, but I didn't have to drive there to make that change, which ordinarily you wouldn't have known there was an issue. You wouldn't have known the chemistry and who knows what the bather load was at an Airbnb, right? I mean, Dude, that's cool. You know. Not having to maybe rely, like if there's like a faulty temp sensor or something exactly. like that. Yeah. I mean, just that feature alone in the hot tub world was, yeah. And uh, uh, when you come down to it too, a lot of folks don't like something floating in the pool or in the hot tub. You can take it out. Uh, it does not hurt Sutro to be out of water. It is not an ORP sensor. It won't dry out or a pH sensor. So you could pull it out during while you're in the hot tub and put it back in and it will go about its business. It'll just re, uh, test again on its next interval. So the evolution is to put it behind the cabinet of a hot tub, put it on the pool pad and take it out of the swimming area, uh, but yet still keep all the benefits of, uh, of the technology. That's an easy sell, man. The people that have the spas are usually like the most neediest ones of <laughs> I know. all the customers. Yeah. Well, that's crazy, right? You've got a smaller body of water, a heavy bather load, and hot water. So, I mean, you're accelerating all that chemical change and you're putting two or three people, which is, I don't remember what the ratio was, but a person is what? One equals 20 or 40, I think, in a hot tub. It's some big number. So, and if you're using it like, Daily or every yeah. other day? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for shock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you kind of mentioned a little bit of the future, but that's kind of my next question here is what, what does the future look like for Sutro down the road? Uh, some of it is pretty defined, uh, like the next year, maybe two. And then the future, obviously, outside of, I mean, just to take it long term, everything outside of pools right? All those water tanks that are holding distill, you know, water and need just, just free chlorine readings. Um, the applications for commercial dishwashers at your hotels that all need chemical uh, adjustment, right? I mean, the people like Eco Labs do dishwashers and swimming pools and right, all those other things that we didn't think about also do require water testing. In the near term, because that cartridge is expandable, the ability to grow more tests, more reagent-based tests. Maybe it's calcium that you want, or maybe it's phosphates, or it's you know borates. Again, whatever you might want for a reagent-based test, imagine that cartridge is expandable because the IP is each one of those bumps. So we could make the bumps 10. We could make it two. Or we could make separate cartridges. One's your startup cartridge because you need free chlorine and calcium, and then you can pull it out and put in your normal running cartridge just for the time. So just the chemistry capabilities alone Inline's probably our biggest right now. We're getting the most requests for put it on the pool pad. And so that'll come in two versions. One will be an immediate adapter for next year. So the current industrial design will basically fit into a, uh, an adapter that will be take it out of the pool. But everything else will be the same. The LTE and the battery will be the same. And then imagine version two, which is actually designed to be built in line, which could be multiple cartridges or a bigger cartridge, or it could be, again, the option real here is, 
we look at technology as a two-way street. What we're showing you is not the holy grail. We're not saying, hey, it's over, take it as it is. We're saying, here's what we have, Mr. Service Guy. What do you think it should be? And what would you like it to be? And I'll tell you what, we are open for that feedback. We don't sit and go, hey, it's, it is what it is, take it or leave it. No, what could we do better? And I'll tell you, one of the things that we do that is astonishing is, and most companies don't do it, is that we have an ear for the tech, for what you want. Now, this business is ripe with opinion, right? I want LSI, I want this, I want that. Sure. But there's no reason why we can't be agnostic to all of that and provide. You want LSI? Well, here's the parameters we test for that give you what you want. You want to test for CYA? Well, here, here's the parameters you need to test for CYA. So Sutro is going to be a very flexible platform. And we look at ourselves more as the data company than we do, let's say, a hardware OEM. So in other words, the monitor is the means to the data. We, we, we would rather not have to have a monitor, which eliminates that whole cost of acquisition and you know what you got to get in to, to, to get that data is I need this monitor to get it. Well, imagine if that cost was zero, but that data feed is what we really want. So we're really keen on giving the, the, the pool guys as much information as we can give them to be as, as knowledgeable and as efficient as we can make them using water chemistry, turning pumps on and off, salt water generators. How many heaters burn out just due to poor water chemistry, calcification? Mm -hmm. How many gunite pools are repaired every year? It's hundreds of thousands of dollars. If we can give you that data, that's what we really are, are, are seeking is this point, is to work into relationships where somebody's got hardware, but we're the data center. We're, for example, next year, we're going to do some AI work where we're proactive dosing. So how about that for a novel concept is we're going to say, hey, it's going to be hot this weekend in Phoenix. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> it's hot every weekend in Phoenix, right? <laughs> that is but correct. Imagine if you're in Houston and you're going to get a storm, you know, on Thursday through Saturday, and you're supposed to be there on Wednesday. The AI will tell you a storm is coming, and we know that storms will impact water chemistry. So you might want to either A, leave some extra chemical behind for the homeowner and understand what to do, or put a little extra in super chlorinate because you know that on Saturday in Florida, you know, Texas, the sun, plan for that. Using technology to plan ahead and proactively dose versus I got to go back out now two days later because the storm dropped everybody's chlorine to zero. But the good news is Sutro would show you that the chlorine is zero. At least if you didn't do that, right, at least you would know to go back out two days later because you have to put some chlorine in. Sure. Anyway, that's a, an example of the evolution where we see the product going. And we provide the software and all these other tools at no charge, right? We don't charge for any of these tools to give the dealers, the service guys, more information to augment what they're doing. Yeah, I think it's incredible that you guys are embracing all that because I Again, back to the ORP monitors, I don't think that that was ever part of their plan. And, you know, it wasn't, they didn't listen to anything we had to say. It was more of like, yeah, here's what it is. This is how it works. You know, oh, sorry, can't do that. Yeah. You know, I think it's really cool. And I've had several conversations with you and Robbie and just, I can tell that it's, it's part of your, you know, overall plan is to, to embrace the industry and embrace this new movement of yeah. like, hey, you know, tell us what you want, tell us what you need and we'll, yeah. we'll do our best to get it. And we're not trying to shoehorn it in, right, to, you know, this isn't a dealer product that we're shoehorning into service, right? It's kind of a, the value proposition for Sutra is different for the service guy than it is for the dealer. And we provide tools that are different for the dealer than we do the service guy. And some companies have, you know, builder, service, and retail. So they get a whole aspect of, so imagine if you're a builder and you could build the price of Sutro into a new pool. No cost of acquisition now, right? It's, it's in the pool. Use it for your 20-day, 20 28-day cure period. And then transfer the data to the service guy or the homeowner as a gift to say, hey, you just invested 80000 I mean, the pools aren't cheap anymore. They're eighty, dollars $100,000 with hardscape and flames and you know, all the things that we get. Imagine now they have a tool to help them better manage this investment. Because no matter whether we liked it or not, we're still on the hook. A year later, if that etching is on your gunite or you've got a problem in your pump, fingers go, you know, CYA is a whole new meaning in the pool industry. And, gunite goes bad right so who am i pointing at is it the applicator is it the the service guy it's never the homeowner right so somebody's going to have to bear the burden of going out there and replastering that that pool so anyway, mm -hmm. just more examples of how we work with each different channel a little differently yeah i think it's an easy inclusion for the pool builders i mean mm. <laughs> you know they don't like transferring it over to service guys anyways so yeah. it's kind of like you know yeah like you said you could give them to it for free or just yeah. include that in your price and yeah you know, it's another way of saving that water from the beginning. I've seen a lot of evolution of builders transferring that responsibility of startup 
Sure. I mean, IPSA and others are now getting a lot more startup work. The builders aren't taking that responsibility. So the poor startup guy comes in, he's got a new pool and he's on the hook now because the builder goes, I wash my hands of this. It's now on you. So imagine if he could work with that builder in a partnership, include the Sucho, but the data saves them both right. from, again, proactive to warranty, not reactive to warranty, right? We don't want to be looking at this as a later fact. It's, hey, I'm watching your pool, Mrs. Customer, and I'm noticing your pH is excessively high. Doing something before it's an issue. And that's the key is proactive to the warranty, reduction of that warranty liability. Uh, it's huge. Uh, it's, it's a big, it's, it's still the number one thing I think in the NPC um, mm -hmm. for their plaster is water chemistry related warranty issue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So how can people get more information about Sutro? Uh, you can go to our website, which is um, www.mysutro.com, or they can reach out to me directly. Um, it's jim at mysutro. Um, I love taking the emails and questions and look, walk you through the ecosystem and show them how it works. Because the one thing about Sutro is that it is an education, right? You need to understand we are not just one of the problems we do have right now is identification that we get pushed into the ORP world. Oh, you're an ORP sensor. Well, until I explain it to you, you don't see the difference. Because on the outside, you know, a Tesla looks like a car until you open the hood and find out there's a frunk and, and no engine. Same with Sucho. Until you open the hood, it, to you, it could be the same thing. So I, I'd love to have these opportunities to educate, show the technicians how they could utilize Sutro. And again, there's no MOQ. I'm not asking them to buy a pallet loads. It's, look, just buy one. Try it. And Find out how to use it in your business. And then when you like it, you crawl, walk, run with us. I mean, we don't have all the answers today. So grow with us into 2022. You get bigger, we get bigger. Go into 2023. Then you start to see this thing really. I mean, you see how far out I am. We're 2023. We're not even talking about, you know, next year. It's kind of like, how do we get to, to the next stage together, right? And with, with guys that want to embrace technology, Look, we're here, but attending the show last week, there are guys that just don't want to. So, and that's fine too, but we'd love to educate them anyway about how technology could help them because it may not work for them today, but hey, you never know. At least you know what's out there uh, and you can make good decisions. If you might get a VIP customer tomorrow that is giving you a hard time, maybe your technology solves the issue. So feel free to reach out. I mean, we're... Look, it's a two-way street for communication. And tell us what you don't like too, by the way. It's not a, you know, call us up and pat us on the back. It's call us up and say, hey, look, I got an issue or I want this or can you do that? And like I said, we're open to road mapping. Uh, example, that, that number of tests per day is because the service guys requested less tests. Don't need three in certain markets, only need two. Right. So, and our business model will change due to the techs out in, let's say, the Northeast. They'd only have a four or five months from season versus California. Well, sure, I can get all 12 cartridges, but... To a guy in Boston, that's two years yeah, worth the cartridges that he doesn't, he's already paid for. So we're, as you can see, we're morphing as the industry kind of helps us shape, you know, what it should look like. Yeah, we can tell. And thank you so much, Jim. We really appreciate you've been uh, a really exciting guest, very knowledgeable about the product and everything discussed will be in the show notes. Okay. Um, you can visit the website. We'll have all your social media links, the website and how people can get a hold of you. But thank you again for taking the time to be with us. No, it's all, my pleasure. Thank you guys for having us. Much appreciated. Hey, pool chasers. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. To connect with today's guests, including pictures, links, and resources from everything discussed today, you can visit the episode page at poolchasers.com or click the links below. To connect more with us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter by searching at Pool Chasers. If you would like to support the podcast, the easiest and most effective way is to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, as well as share the show or your favorite episode with a friend or on social media. Also, you can get early access to each episode by supporting us through Patreon. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for sharing some of yours with us today. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.